to be successful, you have to be able to deal with uncertainty. And so if you're looking to be successful, then what you actually are looking for is you're looking for the traits that ultimately are what are found in someone that is a success. So many people are dealing with uncertainty. Everyone. And, and that uncertainty is causing depression. And, anxiety. And, and anxiety. And it's causing um, paralyzation, really. They're paralyzed by fear, whether it's fear of failure or fear of uncertainty or fear of failing in front of other people, um, you know, whatever that may be. That's all uncertain, not safe, life-threatening mm -hmm. to your brain. So number one, adversity is imminent. Uh, the environment, the scenario will never be perfect. It will never be ideal. There will always be situations, obstacles uh, that will arise. And I think as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, as a salesperson, as just a human being, understanding that on the front end, that there will be obstacles, that there will be adversity, that there will be struggles, uh, will put you so far ahead of the competition because you're, you're almost prepared and waiting for it. And when it arises, you're like, oh yeah, of course this happened because I'm trying to do something significant. Of course there's obstacles, of course there's adversity. Um, so number one, it's gonna happen. It's inevitable, it's imminent. And it's times, it's in difficult times uh, when the pressure's on that determines and, and shows someone's true character. And um, it is a time for a leader to be able to buckle down, strengthen yourself, and prove with your actions, your words, and your heart who you are and what you're made of. And um, it's quite simple, actually. It's just very simple. Yeah. It's uh, you look inward, and you know I will say I will say this too: Is it easy? No, it's not always easy. In a time like this, there were things that I thought about that I needed to do that I had fear. There's no doubt about it. I had fear. Uh, but I had a choice to make. Do I do I succumb to that or do I power through it and do it anyway? And I think in a role of leadership, we're faced with thoughts, ideas, things we know to do that we allow our brains to play this mental ping pong. Hmm. And if you give yourself more than just a few seconds of that mental ping pong, you've already lost. Yeah. And so if a thought, an idea, an action you need to take to help lead and display what you're made of comes to mind and you don't act on it immediately, um, you've lost, man. So I challenge people, when you think of something great to do and it impacts your business, it impacts a relationship in your business, don't hesitate on it. Do not procrastinate on that. Take action now. Yeah, because I know a lot of people are going through times right now that are super uncertain, some uncomfortable times. And, uh, and I've been there and I'm, I'm, I'm there all the time. And, and so this is what Tony Robbins said. He said, and this is paraphrasing. He said, the ones that ultimately will be mo the most successful are the ones that can handle the most uncertainty. So think about that. The ones that will ultimately be the most successful are the ones that can handle the most uncertainty. Is that the Winston Churchill? Is it Winston Churchill if you're going through hell? Keep just on going. Just keep going. Yeah, you got to keep moving. So yeah. you don't want to sit in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think it's I think it's an important thing for people to understand that it's normal. Yeah. Um, because I think that's where a lot of the prolonged stages of uncertainty and anxiety comes from when people feel like something's wrong with me. Yeah. Like. I went through this, this happened, created an anxiety, created fear, created uncertainty. I don't know what to do. I'm the only one that's ever dealt with this or something's wrong with me for feeling this way or right. I'm inadequate because I'm feeling this way. Right. It's important for people to know that the highest level of performers in the world have dealt with the exact same yep. thing. Uh, number two, adversity is necessary. Um, if you think about the process of growth, if you think about what it takes to become a better human being, to become a better business person, to become a better spouse, better father, better you name it, 
you have to go through some type of adversity in order to grow. And that's the purpose of it. Like that's the purpose of the pain in adversity is for you to grow into the person that's able to do the things on the other side of it. Uh, and until you do, you're stuck in the middle. And so adversity is a necessary part of any process. And he said, when you choose to be a lifelong learner, you don't get to pick the lessons. When you choose to be a lifelong learner, so good. you don't get to pick the lessons. And man, I feel like I'm learning so many lessons throughout this uh, crisis, which creates that opportunity. And one of those is this realization for some of you that are that are feeling the um, effects of it right now in a negative way. And that is you always have to perform to the best of your abilities because you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. So here's my encouragement from that. Okay. My encouragement that is if you are dealing with a lot of uncertainty right now, if there's a lot of things that are up in the air, a lot of things that are making you uncomfortable, a lot of things um, that aren't, um, you know, neat and in an order, that's a good thing. And so embrace that because it is by embracing it, it's by handling it, it's by dealing with it, it's by continuing to do it anyway, even in those uncertain times that ultimately are what separate the successful from the unsuccessful. As a lot of you know, my story over the last three and a half years has been this massive transformation going from being unemployed to you know, the first 12 months of this transformation making over 300 grand, the next 12 months over 450, next 12 months over 650. Uh, but it was in that first year where things had truly started to gain massive momentum. I got a phone call sitting in the exact parking space in the exact parking lot that we were in today from the Georgia Department of Insurance. And they basically said there was a part of our process, a part of our distribution process that they needed to look into and evaluate whether it was uh, violating a certain rule that they had. It was just kind of one of those like uh, fine print type of things that it may fall under, may not but basically said that it's possible that like what I was doing could no longer exist. The opportunity for me could no longer exist, but they said I could continue doing what I'm doing um, as they went under this, uh, as they started this investigation. What I had to do, <laughs> number one was laugh and, and kind of get into that sense of humor. Like I'm just coming from being unemployed, broke, in debt, all this stuff, and making like $160,000, $170,000 in like a six, seven month period. And then all of a sudden I get this phone call saying that this entire thing could just go away. Um, but what I did in that moment set up the rest of my entire career, and I believe the rest of my entire life. What I did was I thought about it I got a little worried. I got a little nervous for about five minutes. And then I went right back to work. I actually walked into a meeting when I got off the phone call, sat there for five minutes, walked into a meeting and sold a bunch of life insurance. But I didn't hear anything for a year and finally found out that they had to change some wording on some of the things that were happening, but everything was ultimately going to be fine. Over that year, of me not knowing if the opportunity, the career that I was absolutely going all in on was even going to exist the next second I could get a phone call and say it's over. Over that year, I sold probably 25, 2600 life insurance policies, all while not knowing if the next day I would be able to continue doing it. Um, that led to conversations down the road and ultimately becoming part owner of the company I then was working for. It was one of their main reasons because they had never seen someone get that type of news and that type of environment and just continue like they didn't even hear it, continue like it didn't even matter and just focus on what they could control, what I could control, which was my actions, my activity while we were waiting, while we were in limbo.